changes we had to share. Same old story, some part of your travelling salesman booked in this oh, afternoon, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Any joy, Barry? That's difficult to say, really, Neville. I've got three spare rooms, but it's it's strictly no overalls, no muddy boots, no alcohol, and lights out by 10.30. It could be worse. It is. They've only got double beds, and one of us have to sleep with us. What's the score? Five knockbacks. Everywhere we've tried, had a six space of bookings. Yeah, it's obvious the old Pringles being on a blower. Looks like we've been blacklisted by the entire licensed Vitulas Association of North Derbyshire. Oh, we've not done much better. Yeah. The places we've tried aren't exactly geared to the needs of the working man. Well, spa country <laughs> this, isn't it, nearby? Gentility rules. So what do we do now? Well. As contingency plans A and B seem to have failed, I suggest we try contingency plan D. Which is what? Find somewhere in Chesterfield. Chesterfield? That's gonna mean a 50-mile round trip. Look, man, we're gonna be wrecked before we even get to work, which means we're gonna be more wrecked before we get on the drink. Which leaves contingency plan E. What's that? Oh. Which is what? Moving to the house itself. Oh, I don't know. Well, it gets oh, my vote, fellas. Listen, listen. It's cheap, right? It's big, and we'll have it all to ourselves, right? Oh. Yeah, right. It gets my vote and all. I stayed in the pantry one night and survived. Yeah, only just. Ah, it's pretty crusty, though, isn't it? That's in a hell of a state. Partly due to the fact that we've been knocking seven colours out of it, like. I mean, even the rats are pissed off. Look, um, I, I said we'd give Dennis a ring before eight. See what he says, eh? Ah, I'd leave it to the leader. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right, thanks. Thanks a lot. We've drawn a blank. So, looks like I'm moving to the manor for the moment. Sorry, bummer. Oh, it's not your fault, Dennis. You're only the gaffer on site. Can't be responsible for any irresponsible act of any daft bugger outside of work. Right, come on. Well, oh, it's not too bad, once you get inside. A bit like prison, really.
Phone this way. Should take the chill off the room. You need a bloody blow lamp plate to chill out the atmosphere, though, wouldn't you? Uh, it is true you wouldn't win any popularity contest at the moment. <laughs> Look, if I'd known old Arthur was going to react that badly, I'd have thought twice about strumping his daughter, wouldn't I? Yes, and having had those thoughts, you'd still have gone and done it. Not law, that's what you're ruled by, Wayne. As soon as there's a fire in your loins, there's a freeze up in your brain. Yeah, but normally it's only me that suffers, isn't it? Gray's knee from shinning a few drain pipes. The odd pulled muscle from doing it to the old Bolero at 45 instead of 33. <laughs> yeah, well, well, look, I might have dropped me mates in it because I couldn't say no to an afternoon of passion. She went half worth it. <laughs> well, that's some consolation to us, Wayne. Right, while well, you finish your jankers, I'll have a scout round and see if I can't find some mattresses and cushions. You'd better decide which one of the 22 bedrooms you're going to lock yourself in. You know, I think it's actually colder out here than it is in the fridge. I think that's it. Right, lads. Hello there. Hello there. Need shopping? Oh, -ho. just got some essential supplies from the little village store. Yeah. You got the keys for the van there? Eh? Aye, right. hold this a minute. Yeah. Oh, here? I've got the receipt for that one now. Yeah. £27, 62p? Aye. That includes the bog roll. Ah! Yes, yes, that's better, isn't it? <coughs> At least one room's habitable. Yeah, it's not. I, I could see a settling in here. <laughs> Up with the, the dilly country, the air, flickering glad on the far side, eh? Elegant room. Do you know, this could be, this could be broad end revisited, eh? <laughs> Reminds me more of gated revisited. All it needs is a tin back and a half. Ah, never mind, eh? Here, look, we can get some sleeping bags in Asda tomorrow. That's fantastic. Yeah, you're right. right actually, look, without what your opinions, Dick Brown. Yeah, we can do with the rest from your way, no key. All right, fine, fine. Look, I've tried to say I'm sorry, but I can't do much more, can I? No, but don't go expecting instant forgiveness. All right. That's all right, I told him. Two days in the doghouse, and he keeps his nose clean and stays out of trouble, and he might get some remission. Yeah, but I mean, Barry sort of likes it here, doesn't he? So I'm doing him a favour, and I. Wayne. You're all right, just um... Hey, uh, right, lads, can I just have a minute? Have us number one, Dennis. We're not going anywhere, are we? Now then, uh, lads, considering the short notice in which our previous tenancy agreement was terminated, you lads haven't gone too far to get this place habitable. I mean, uh, I know it's not perfect by any means, but at least it's a roof over your heads. Now, uh, as far as the work's concerned, we've had clearance to start again. But uh, depending on what Ali Fraser has in mind for the place, we have to wait for the architect to come up with the new plans. So, uh, in the meantime, if Bomber and Oz, if you uh, concentrate on the cellar, um, Moxie, Wayne, you make good the panel in and the plastering's been ripped away. Uh, you can start on the electrical work now, buddy. Neville, stop in the kitchen. What's the matter, Moxie, man? Oh, aye, right, we've got this uh, new bloke working for one now. You tell him, Moxie. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, as some of you already know, I've got a new identity. Uh, so as far as officialdom's concerned, I'm now Brendan Mullicky. <laughs> what? <laughs> so it would help, like, if you start to call on us Brendan so as I can get used to it. <laughs> it's going to yeah. take a while. Yeah, well, you call us by my new name, but then all of a sudden, out of the blue light, call us by the old one. You know, just to test my reflexes. You know, you had any moxie? Hey. Oh, sorry, Brendan. <laughs> what are that? Should you? Oh, you last you. you. Right, lads, uh, I've got to leave this happy band. Uh, just like a cross key, all right? Oh, aye. Sorry for some minute. Oh, it's only what for one night, Oz, man. I'll be back with you lot tomorrow. Oh, not know where I got by you, not, will you? What? I said that. Even though we're sleeping on the site and we want travelling time, I'll read you can tell Ali Fraser that. Alright, oh, what well, if he wants to start charging you rent for living on his property? Right. Right, look, there. Uh, oh, aye, yeah. I'm gonna take uh, your car with me because you'll largely need the van to go and shop. Nah, hang on. Right, come on.
Hey, I'll be over tomorrow afternoon after seeing the Yorkie check, all right? Sleep well. Oh, hi. <laughs> hey, hey, give me too hard on him, man. I mean, just imagine, if it wasn't for him now, you'd be stuck in the air, blowing him out with all the Pringle, staring down his miserable gob. Aye. Drinking freezing cold pints of it, huh? How many games of fives and threes? Listening to his jukebox and eating his nice fresh sandwiches, eh? Well done, Monday. Yeah, well, uh, I think I'll go down the galley, get a brew on. Uh, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me it's gonna be a stood up here. Oh. Don't get up. Ali, my son. It's a bit early for you, isn't it? I hope an earthquake has not struck Casa del Fraser. I don't know, no, 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 Kenny, but as it happens, it is property that I would like to discuss with you. Oh, certainly. I take it from the briskness of your manner, but is your manner giving you concern again? You know, it's funny you should anticipate that, Kenny. It's almost as if you knew about the problems I would have with this house before you sold it to me. Oh, no, no. nothing like that. No, it's just that I'm feeling rather perceptive today. Uh, how can I help you? Well, I just had a word with this architect of mine, and he tells me that there is reasonable, if limited, scope for us to redevelop the interior of the house, provided we do not molest the exterior. Well, it's a bit like having an arse lift without a facelift, isn't it? <laughs> Very good, yeah. Yes, I'm also reliably informed that the idea of time-sharing units would be a non-runner as far as the local authority is concerned. And as for your idea of a fat farm, well, that would be no more generously considered. Uh, why don't you threaten to sell it to one of those bagwash religious sects? That would make the council change their tune, wouldn't it? Look, I'd be interested in another more practical suggestions, Kenny. Oh. oh, yeah, have a drink, yeah. Well, let's see what we can find. Here we are, just a job. Private nursing home. Or as they term it, retired gentlefolk. There you go, son. Sprouting up all over the place they are. And it sounds a bit of a change from my country pads for city slickers idea. Ah, uh, you're simply going from exploiting disposable income to exploiting disposable people. And actually, there's more purse in the latter. How do you reckon that, Kenny? Uh, well, there's more turnover of people. Obvious, isn't it? And the other beauty of this situation is, not, not only do you get fees from the DHSS, but also from grateful couples whose grannies you've uh, got off their hands, OK? It's a win and a place, son. You seem remarkably well informed about all this, Kenny. Oh, yeah. One of these was high on my investment portfolio before my enforced exile. Oh, come on, Ali, it's a cinch. After your initial building costs, your only overheads are for the soup, the walk-in frames, and an old matron as winter dressing. And what council, with a heart, is going to turn down building permission for an old folks home? I mean, I ask you. Well, I'll have a word with my man on the spot. See what he says. Now, are you pitching for this, son? And Bob's your own. Or granddad, in this case. <laughs> oh, yeah. I told you I was feeling perceptive today. And, uh, if there was any lingering grievance, you know, about me, which I'm sure it's not, about me having sold you this very desirable piece of property, well, no. We're sweet, aren't we? Yes. For the time being, Kenny. Good. You take this regularly, then? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get very nostalgic for the old country. Living abroad makes me miss all those English things, you know, like the GGs, my executive box at Spurs, cold, misty mornings, and English breakfast to go with them. And then again, there are compensations.
Yeah. I thought it was a green goddess for a minute. Nah, green Christian, eh, hey, mate? Hey, give the lad a shout. We're telling the first country house breakfast is nearly ready, will you? Hey, up! Shake your leg, you lot. Grubs up. Woke up during the night, didn't he? Complaining about my snoring. Yeah, and he couldn't get back to sleep because his owl kept tooting. So he lifted up his bed and walked. Wonder where he's went. See if I can find him, I suppose. Must be the only bloke I know who can sleep through the smell of that lad. Oz! Oz! Well, I'll give you a ring during the week. Yeah, I'll have to ring you, pet, because I'm moving in again with the lads tonight. Just like old times, eh? Take care of yourself, Dan. And you take care, too. You see the band's good of my love, eh? OK. Right, turn on. Turn on. Right. thing would be to split up into two groups of two, right? Then one has to take one after the list and the other the other, and one can read out while the other gets the stuff off the shelves. Time and motion man to make an ear gizzards. Right. Me and Moxie will get to be on the bog road. He's talking to get the rest. I think Barry had a slightly more even division of labour in mind, Did he? Oh, well, tough shit. He's looking to get me along on this trip at all. I never thought I'd see the day I was punching the wood in supermarkets. Well, this is very nice. I hope Ali's picking up all the bill for this, is he? Aye, well, I did manage to persuade him that it would be cheaper for me to rent offices down here than to travel from Newcastle every week. Ah, it's a pity he wasn't so obliging towards my lads. We're having a squat at the manor at the moment. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Coffee? Yeah, please. Milk and sugar? Two, please, aye. Is there any word from Ali, then? Ah, oh, he phoned from Spain this morning. He was in a very business-like mood. Cool, that sounds ominous. On the contrary, he's made a very shrewd decision as it happens. Thornley Manor is to become an old folks' home. Really? It's a bit of a change from timeshare and flats, isn't it? Suddenly feeling his age, like, is he? I don't know what his motives are, but I do know that the planning permission will be a breeze. Government grants will be available for some of the work, and once completed, the premises will be rate-free. Oh, that sounds like a good hand. Does that not alter your plans, though? I mean, uh, presumably that uh, wipes out the jacuzzi and the Nautilus gym and uh, the squash court and the bar and that laugh to go, eh? Some alterations will be necessary, obviously. Oh, All right, let's have a look at the model. Now, essentially, 
We'll be altering the balance of the design from... Sorry, Ned. Large self-contained units with some communal facilities to a reduced, less private unit space per person, but with larger areas for group activity. Small bedrooms, big bugs. Yeah. That would be the strand of the redevelopment, yes. So, uh, how long is it going to take away on your plans, then? Oh, you'll have them by the end of the week. I've done a few of these oldies homes before. They're a piece of cake, really. Ah, oh, well, growing old's a growth industry, obviously. Is there anything we can work on in the meantime? Aye. Well, the kitchens will need to be extended to accommodate mass catering equipment. Mm. And I should imagine I'll take out that second stairwell and build in a lift. Always assume an alley uh, crumbles the cookie that way, of course, like. We shall have to see. Mm -hmm. Little boxes, eh? Before they get stuck in the littlest boxes of all. Little saying, eh, all. Wait till we get sleeping bags organised and a proper roster for the kitchen. <laughs> we just like Germany again. Right, that's what I'm afraid of. Ned, look, whatever deprivations we suffered there and maybe about to suffer again here, there's no denying that sense of communal spirit, is there? Um, ah, yes, bacon. Uh, it's Rindless. Be uh, best back be favourite, judging by this morning. Yeah. We've all moved on from there, though, Barry, haven't we? At least we're supposed to have done. Just another depressing indication of our lack of upward mobility that we're still here roughing it. Couldn't we house or no? Smoked or unsmoked? Um, there are three of each save arguments. Now, I think I'm trying to draw a distinction between quality of life and spiritual progress. Oh, yeah, let's get some wonder loaf to go with this bacon. Ha, <laughs> ha, Let's get some flour and yeast to go with this bacon. Oh, just as soon have bread, Barry. Yeah, we'll have. I'll bake my own now. Oh, when I was with me with betrothed, I took cookery lessons. It was very important not to fall into stereotype roles vis a vis domestic chores. Anyway, one of the things they taught me was how to make my own bread. And you know something, Neville? When they bought my little brown cob out of the oven, hand baked my me, I, I nearly cried. You know, now I think I know how women must feel when they give birth. Thirsty work, this, isn't it, eh? Ah, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll even thirsty. I was strung way up by the bollocks for this latest indiscretion. Yeah, it was bloody thoughtless, even for him. Man's got the sense of moderation, Moxie, man, has he? Enough is never enough. Uh, Oz. Yeah. Do you think you could stop calling us Moxie? I'm Brendan Mulcahy now. Is that the best you can get, Brennan Mulcahy? Yeah. I mean, Moxie's are I can get away with that, because it rhymes with poxy, that's no bother, but... Can I see you as a Brendan, really? Let alone a Mulcahy. Yeah, well, I'm stuck with it now, aren't I? It's either a nickname or a life of constant anxiety waiting for a gloved hand on me shoulder. Hold on a minute. Fancy a point of Guinness, Brendan? <laughs> on board, right? I suggest if we form a human chain between here and the kitchen, right? Well, are you going to fit into that? All I'm trying to do, Oz, is to maximise efficiency right? and minimise effort. Right. So, if you and Moxie help us with the groceries, Neville and I reciprocate by helping you with the beer. I don't think Oz understands the concept of time saving, Barry. It's too many years being paid by the hour. <laughs> uh, excuse me, excuse me, but we just happen to be one jump ahead of you two duck eggs. So, Smarter than the average bear we are. Uh, slightly. After you. Okay. How can those two be so smart to think so laterally? <laughs> Ain't that snake there, Moxie? Where? Where? Oh. <laughs> oh, so much for special undercover agent Mulcahy, yeah? 
falls at the first fence, doesn't he? There's <laughs> hardly a fair test, Oz. <laughs> Anyone would react to a snake warning, no matter what his name was. Well, that's only what the police will do, though, isn't it, Brendan? Don't expect them to write you a letter telling you when they're coming to see you. I know, I know. Just have to concentrate a lot harder. Hey, anyone want a butty? These are, um... I'll try some truck now. Yeah. I'm not hungry. Yeah, not you. Thank you. So I think it's going to be like that, is it, eh? Uh, sorry, Wayne. You can't expect any consideration from us when you show none in return. Who is this Brendan Mulcahy, anyway? It's Mullicky, Barry. No, that's not. It's Mulcahy, the name of the papers. Yeah, I don't know. I can't pronounce that, though. What's the point of having a false name, then? I didn't have any choice in the matter, you know. I didn't go to rent a name. It was an alehouse in Kilbane. I could hardly call myself Fitzherbert Carruthers. It's just as well, isn't it, because you can't pronounce that either, can you? Who is Brendan Mulcahy, anyway? I mean, does he exist, or is he just a creation? He's probably a dead man. I don't know how he feels. See, what happens is, one Mick snuffs it over there in Potato Land, and his family flog his passport and that to another Mick, so he can come over here and work, you know? Ah, that's not all him had to get up to, either. What, you mean the IRA bomber? IRA bomber's right. You may find the anti-terrorist squad on your tail, Brendan, as well as your ordinary plods. You're really reassuring, you are, Oz. Hello, Ben's back. Same with my someone. Yeah. What's this, Teddy Bear's picnic? No, no, it's a dinner break, Dennis. Of which, incidentally, we we'll happen to have uh, 12 minutes left. <laughs> What's going on then, Dan? Any word from Annie Fraser yet? Aye. As from now, lads, we're working on Thornley Manor, a rest home for retired gentlefolk. Ah, oh, that's nice, isn't it? Really cross the line Luck is bound to find us But it sure is taking this time Every day seems a little bit harder To find the will to win But we keep on running You didn't find any priceless oil paintings or racks of vintage wine down there, did you know? Oh, a couple of bottles of Chateau Exhibition would have done me. Yeah, there it goes. Not into a hard job. Oh, I've got a couple of old video cassettes. Eh, uh, video cassettes? Aye, video cassettes. You know, cassettes would go into videos. Yeah, I don't know. What for, like? No, I was just thinking, you know, they might be a bit tasty. Bear in mind that the former owner of these premises was a porn merchant. I think we ought to give them a look at that. You know, just in case they're... Depraved? Well, Brendan, tough shit. They went in the skip. Oh, <laughs> well, I wasn't too worried, Moxie. Well, I've never to play them on any video. Yeah, I don't know that. But, I mean, we've got to start thinking about what we're going to do in the evenings now that the Bally Mole's out of bounds. Well, 
Adam reports I can't spend my nights looking for a pub we haven't been barred from. Oh, wait up. This is Jane. He's decent work on his barn. Would you fancy giving his hand? That'll be in bollocks. I suppose they've done away with surf them, man, haven't they? You'll be paying us. Anyway, you're still home for them two trout you lifted out of his stream. Uh, excuse me, I would have owed them for them two trout if I had got to eat them. But the bastards would want them the nick, didn't it, for a fish supper? Yeah, Cheek right. right. See you later. <clears throat> Aye, come look at them. Come look at them, Bill. Well, I don't depend on any holes, but I'm going to try them all in my life. After all, there's only one of us who's dropped the daughter. Even someone as unreasonable as Arthur Pringle should see that. Oh, I wouldn't back on that. Makes worth a try, I suppose. There's <laughs> an object lesson in the futility of mankind. The last few minutes of conversation will be all to be. Oh, get to the point, Barry, will you, if there is one? The point. The point. Is it here you all are in the most fascinating part of the English countryside and you're really thatching around like a goldfish in a schoolboy's pocket trying to find things to amuse yourself with? I mean, what a pathetic comment on your imaginations. Got any suggestions in blue, Peter? As a matter of fact, yes, I have. I was working upstairs in the attic, I happened to gaze out the window and spy a rather lovely thing. A spire. Now, you always know what's under a spire, don't you? Uh, let me think. Um... Church. <laughs> Not just a church, Bonner. A store of local history, a museum of architecture. But, uh, has it got a bar body? Right. It's still time. We could pop down to the local shop, buy some crayons, type and such like, and, for instance, spend an evening brass rubbing. <laughs> well, you read about one thing, buddy. I could certainly take the rub a bit of brass than it. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me five minutes to reason with him, all right? Right. Well, if that doesn't work, give me two minutes and I'll rip his lungs out. Thirty seconds to get out or I'll call the police. Arthur, oh, hear me out for a minute, please, will you? Look, look Arthur, I know the behaviour of, uh, of one of our group has caused you much heartache. And believe you me, we feel exactly the same about him as you do. I mean, that's why we've, uh, we've disciplined him ourselves in a way you would have approved of. Castration? Uh, of the social kind, Arthur, yes. He's, uh, he's confined to base. He's, uh, he's in a glass house, as you brave fighter pilots might say. Uh. That still leaves the rest of you to make mayhem. Oh, come on, Arthur. Look, I'm a respectable married man. I mean, outside in my van, I've got three other men who have done a hard day's graft and simply want a quiet pint and an evening's conversation at your fireside as a reward. I mean, they're not rapists or thieves. Vagabonds. Was that bastard giving in yet, Dennis? <sighs> ah, you okay. Very good, I must say. What the f... Hello. I'm oh, sorry if I startled you. Oh, no, no, no. <clears throat> oh, um, uh, Barry, B B Barry Taylor. Ian Burton. Oh, pleased to meet you. <laughs> oh, I hope you don't mind. I'm just doing a bit of brass rubbing. Mm, so I see. No, I don't mind at all. Provided you make a small contribution to the upkeep of the church. Oh, yes, of course, yes, sir. Oh, no, no, please. Um, just pop it in the uh, collection box on your way out. I'm afraid I should be shutting up the shop in a few minutes. 
Oh, it's all right. I'll come back tomorrow. I don't suppose he'll be going anywhere. <laughs> oh, I see. You're staying locally then, are you? Oh, Thornley Manor. Yeah, doing a bit of restoration work. Turned it into an old people's home, actually. Oh, yes. I'd, um, I'd heard it was being done up. I don't suppose your chaps fancy a bit of restoration work on my church, do they? Uh, gratis, of course. Oh, um, sorry, Vicar. Bit thin on stonemasons in our team. <laughs> no, if it's an extension you want building. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, how are you finding life at the manor? It must be rather bleak. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, well, the, um, the evenings look like they're going to be a bit empty. Uh, that's why I turn my hand to this. Oh, all oh, the other fellas have gone, gone out on the, uh, gone on, on the, on the, on the uh, you know, gone for a walk like we know. Oh. Well, if you're all free one evening, do pop round to the vicarage for a cup of tea. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sure they'd like that. Oh. Right. <laughs> well, um, lights out, I'm afraid. I'll see you to the door. Thornley Manor, eh? Oh. I don't suppose you've had a chance to see the ghost yet. The, uh, the, 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 the ghost? Oh, yes. It appears a couple of times a year, I gather. Hey, lads, lads, listen. Get this one. Guess what? Don't tell us. You found a pub at the bottom of the garden. And the manager's a pixie. And the beer's free. And the different serving cockneys. Now, listen. Listen. Thanks to me dipping into local history, all right, I've discovered something very interesting about this house. What? It's got a ghost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope it's got its own sleeping bag, because it ain't sharing mine. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen. Apparently, right, at the end of the last century, the owner of this house discovered an old tinker trespassing on his grounds, right, and bludgeoned him to death. And now, apparently, the ghost of this old tinker stalks the halls and corridors of this house, seeking revenge. Oh, well, at least we'll get some spirits in it. Aye, aye, aye. Hey, did you feel a very man, will you? Stalk down the kitchen, there's a couple of cans of lager. <laughs> Joking, mate. I suggest from now on we individually move around this house in pairs, mate. Aye. Right. Right. Down. Help, help. Stop it. Stop, stop it. Better have a pay after that. Brendan, I've just seen a ghost. Brendan! Did you ever see the Thomas 
Christ Crowley thing. No, I never went to rock concerts for years. Too busy working. Oh, man, it was a film. And in it, Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway seduced each other across the chessboard. Well, it was a very sexy scene. Really? Imagine you might find that a wee bit uncomfortable, all these bits sticking into your bum. We make a move now, otherwise I'm going to be here all day. You live dangerously, why don't you? Yes. Oh, good morning, Howard. Yes, how are you? I'm extremely well, Ellie, thank you. I just thought I'd let you know that our planning application's in and that my personal contact on the council says there'll be no trouble. Good, I'm very pleased to hear that. My new drawings are also coming along nicely. Good. I just thought that now would be an opportune time to discuss the costing of the materials. I've drawn up three different budgets for fitting the surfaces and other interior details. And uh, how are they running out? At 22,000, 48,000, and top of the range, 65,000. Uh, well, uh, I think, uh, Howard, in view of the revised nature of the premises, uh, I think it would be a wee bit of a pity to waste all your fancy Dan trappings on people with one foot in the grave. I think we should err on the side of caution, don't you, Howard? As you wish, Ali. But the first figure I quoted is an absolute rock bottom using the cheapest materials available. It's all right, Howard. I've already laid out enough cash in this project. It's time to start earning a little nest egg for my old age. So, I want no corner left uncut, Howard. Do you understand? And you can pass that on to Dennis, too. Will do. Incidentally, it may interest you to know that he and his lads are currently staying at the house. Are they now? Ah, well, don't mention it just yet, then, uh, Howard, but I think sometime in the future it might be wise to broach the little subject of rent with them. <laughs> I'll get the meters rent as well, if you like. I was not joking, Howard. Right. Well, I'll get the plans out to you by the weekend, darling. Lovely. Look forward to seeing them then. OK. All right, bye for now, then. Bye, Howard. My God, if Faye Dunaway played chess like you, she'd be lucky if she got a good night kiss. Oh, good evening. Good evening. What a Uh, point of bitter, please. And a straight glass. Mm. Have, uh, have you been here before? Uh... I think I was in here one lunchtime a uh, few weeks ago now. Oh, I thought I'd recognise you. 87p. Right. Uh, would it be all right, like, if I uh, took some drinks out to my kids? Yeah, I should think so, uh, provided they bring the glasses back and provided they don't break any. Oh, no, no, they're uh, they're very well behaved. Well, what would it be? Um, orange juice, Coca-Cola? <coughs> Five pints of bitter, please. They're growing lads. They must be. Are you Irish by any chance? Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Brendan Mulcahy is the name. Well, you can piss off. I don't surf mix in here. Where's the drinks in? Wouldn't let us have him. Why not? Do you recognize your leg? No. Won't serve mix, apparently. That man's got about as much charm as a mass grave. <laughs> what can their voice say? Oh, this be London's got a boiler in, man. No, no, they're my voices. Oh, well, it's either the ghost or Wayne's on the turn. How are you? Oh! It's going, will you? Ah, lads. Yes. Well, I thought I'd have a night in with the old goggle box. Where'd all this lot come from? I got it, didn't I? It was the least I could do under the circumstances, seeing as I dropped you lot in it. What's your programming? It's uh, one of them tapes that Oz and Bomber found. I'm not a connoisseur of porn, but this looks like a golf lesson to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it went up in here. Fast forwarded a bit. Well, this is about as interesting as a car park of Bali Moo, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? yeah, hang on. Hang on. I did take the liberty of renting the tape for the evening. A bit of a culture delight. What is it? The stud. Oh, 
Thought Joan Collins would go down well. <coughs> Don't know this bit. What's this? What's that's not the stud, you duck egg man. That's Black Beauty. Oh, ah, you know, the but it's an easy enough mistake, isn't it? I mean, you know, they've both got horses in the title. Yeah, well, that was a short-lived pleasure. Yeah, no, hang on, hang on. Got one more left, though. Let's see what's on this one. <laughs> hey! This is this! This is this room, buddy. Yeah, man, look! Hey, can you see no, thank you. Hello, Arthur. And what do you do? I, I, I run the local pub. Hi, you local? Can you tell us to be nice to you? I do want you to be nice to you. Don't you, Arthur? Call me, uh, call me Tiger. Tiger! 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 say anything, Arthur. I want you to know we totally understand. And we'd probably have done the same in your position. You know? The wife's done a runner. Some topless bit of crumpet's got his legs wrapped round your neck. Not only are you rubbish, but you talk rubbish as well. I'm going to call the police. I wouldn't do that if I were you, old son. They might be interested in seeing this. Remember a little party at Thornley Manor? Kenny Ames and a bird called Pee Wee and this bloke with a video camera? Yes. Mr. Arthur Tiger Pringle. This is your life. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yes, it's darling. 